Hi, hey, we want to share our next project we're going to be working yeah. on. So see this piano here? This has been in the family, my husband's family, since about 1880, this piano. And, and it's seen a lot better days. It, it's it kind has. of sad, you guys. <laughs> so we are going to restore it. So I hope you'll follow along as we show what we're doing in our stories for the next little while. Let's take a look at what the piano looked like the day it was brought to my home to be repaired and restored. It's missing a leg. It has inappropriate legs. The legs that were on it have been removed. It's one of those pianos that's been cut down. In the 1940s, this was very common to cut down pianos to modernize them. During World War II, uh, piano manufacturers quit making pianos and so piano tuners and restorers thought of a way to make money and update pianos to make them look a little more modern, and so they cut them down. They kind of butchered them. They cut them down and placed a mirror over the top to make them appear smaller. So what we are going to do um, is restore it back to what it was like. We're going to make it a full-size upright piano again. We're going to find uh, an old piano for free that we can uh, use parts of to restore this piano into what it should be. We're going to find some legs. We're going to need to replace the front and the side panels and the top with pieces from a salvaged piano. We are so blessed to have this photograph that actually has the piano, a portion of the piano in the photograph. It's actually a photograph of my husband's grandmother and great-grandmother and it was taken around 1892. So th we're lucky that we still have this original photograph of them but also of the piano and we tried to find a piano to salvage that was similar but we were not able to find one but we were able to pick up one that will work to restore our piano. So on the front of the piano, this, this, I'm gonna have staff lift it up. This used to be the top of the piano. It would have sat up there, and then this piece here would have been up here. So we needed a new top. We also needed a new piece that would go across the entire front of the piano. Yes, that's because cut down. this has been cut down as well. Um, other problems with the piano is when another family member had it, of course the music stand is broken, but Wood's all this cracked. is all cracked. So we hope to scavenge this part off of the other piano as well. Um, we will also need a side of the piano because of the way it was cut down. So we're gonna take some sides off of the piano and they're gonna be a little bit different, but it's, it's gonna work. I'm, I'm positive it's gonna work. The other thing is the leg situation. We're missing a leg on this side. This is not the original leg. It would have had a piece coming from the body, um, coming out with a wheel on it. Um, so we're going to scavenge legs off of the other piano as well. And um, just because it's got chunks of wood out of it and everything like that, it will get a coat of paint. We will not be staining this, but we are going to attempt to make it beautiful again. This is the piano that we are going to use to scavenge parts off of. I found it on Facebook Marketplace for free and it was an old player piano, but it's missing its inner parts. So we are going to scavenge the top, the front, the legs, and the sides to create our new piano. So we are going to start taking this piano apart. We're going to start to take apart our scavenge piano or our donor piano and we're going to begin with taking the top off and removing those hinges. The most challenging part on this piano in the beginning was all of the screws are those old slot screws and it is so hard to keep the screwdriver and the drill on them as we get those off. 
Once the top of the piano was removed, we're looking to remove this front piece that we need. And so inside, there is a little lever right here that we're just going to lift up on both sides. And that is going to remove the front of the piano. The next piece we want to remove is that music stand section. And there's just two screws holding that piece of wood on. You just remove those and then it slips right off. And then the keyboard cover itself actually was just held down by that piece of wood from the music stand. So that was easy to remove as well. The piano keys on our donor piano were really easy to remove. And so we removed those so we could access um, the screws and things to remove the legs. Um, on the piano we were saving, we thought we'd do the same thing, but we found those keys were a little harder to remove. So we ended up just leaving those in and not pulling those out. We are now ready today to remove the sides of the piano. Um, I did a little research. This piano is so old that we figure that the glue on it is an animal-based glue. Um, and so a little research on that said that good old white vinegar would loosen up or what would you call it? Loosen up? Yeah, get it tacky again, uh, the, the glue. Um, and then we'll just gently pry it apart. Um, so in order to get the glue to go in, we've got a seam up here at the top. And so we're gonna just use the oscillating tool to cut a slight groove in here and then put the vinegar in and pry it apart. And here's a view of the sides. We're gonna try to salvage this whole, whole piece. side in one piece. So it'll be removing it from this back section and then also it's glued right here on this section as well. So Steph and I are both using um, oscillating tools on each side of the piano to cut a groove in that seam area. We have fitted the tool with a wood cutting blade and we are just using it to um, cut that little groove so we can put our vinegar in there. Once we had a groove that was about a quarter of an inch deep, then we sprayed in the white vinegar into those areas to let it do its work. It took about 20 to 30 minutes where we saw it starting, starting to loosen up. And then we started using our um, five-in-one painter's tool to kind of get in the groove. We used crowbars, we used screwdrivers, anything that we had around. The pry bars actually work the best to get in there and start to loosen it up. Just want to show you some of the progress here. You can actually see daylight through so we are starting to break through so we've kind of this is all just new to us we're just trying what we can so this is a very broken painter's tool but my method has been to hammer this in the seam to loosen it up spray with vinegar and then i'm using a crowbar to kind of pry the rest open and i'm working from back to front so that it loosens all the way down on both sides at the same time so we can prop it off easily. And again, you can see it's split there and starting to loosen up right in there too. So we're coming. As we worked on removing these sides, we worked on both sides of both pianos at the same time so that we really weren't wasting time. Um, Steph was at one end, I was at the other end. And um, while the vinegar was kind of loosening up on and softening that glue on one piano, then we would be spraying it on the, the other piano. And before you know it, all of a sudden it was loose and ready to just pop off. In order to remove the legs, we needed to remove some screws that were in this section that were going into the screw. This is the section where the keys on the piano were. And then the next thing we're going to do is around on this side of the piano, there is a screw that is holding the keyboard section on. And if we remove that and those two screws, we'll be able to pull this top section off of the legs. 
to remove the section where the keys on the piano were, um, we tilted the piano over on its back so that when we remove the legs, it didn't tip over. And so we re loosened those four screws, two on each side, and then we were able to lift off that piece of wood where the keys of the piano went. On the bottom of the piano, to remove this bottom leg, the portion that hooks to cross, this is the crossbar where the pedals are on the piano. There's one screw that we need to remove to separate the leg from the, the piano crossbar. And this was just a mortar and tennis, I think, how, that tennis, how do you say that? Mortis and tenon, I believe. Mortis and tenon joint that was glued together and then there was one screw holding it together. So we'll just unscrew that and then that leg will come up. We're now ready to attach the legs from our donor piano to our piano and um, we trimmed them down to fit the length. There was a little piece we did have to cut off there and then I enlisted my husband to help with this part because I was concerned that it really needed to be sturdy. So what we did is we drilled two holes in each of the leg in that base part where the wheel is on the leg and we made them big enough to fit a dowel and I believe it was a three-quarter inch dowel. Then in our piano we marked where those dowels would be um, coming out of the leg and again we drilled in with a wood bit a three-quarter inch hole into the piano and we did two of these holes as well. And now we're ready to attach the leg to our piano. We're going to put um, a generous amount of glue on the dowels, put them in the holes. We're going to put a lot of glue on the dowel itself and in the hole. We want to make sure that this really is secure. So we'll put those in, two of those, and then we'll repeat and do the same thing on the base of the piano. Um, I was really generous with the glue. I wanted to make sure that this joint really was secure. So I used quite a bit of glue, put glue in the holes on the base of the piano as well. And then we are going to stick the dowels in to the piano base there and then tap it into position with a rubber mallet. We'll get that all secured there. We then have placed a large bar clamp uh, around the base of the piano all the way to the leg and tighten that up um, and then we'll let that sit overnight to completely cure and if when we did this too we also wiped off any glue that kind of squoes out of that joint you want to do that with a wet cloth um, while the glue is still wet. We drilled two holes through the keyboard section of our piano we are keeping and secured, put two screws in there that went down into that leg section that will secure the leg from the top. When the piano is all put together, there will be a piece of wood that covers those screws so it will not show. The piano that we are using for parts was a little bit wider than our piano and so we need to trim down pieces to fit. This is the music stand area and we needed to take off about an inch from each side of that piece. Now we place it in and make sure it's going to fit appropriately and then we can secure it with um, a couple of screws. We're now ready to um, prepare the side panels to put on our piano. These are the panels that we took off of our donor piano and they are a little bit too wide and they are a little bit too long. And so we are going to trim them down to fit our piano. And uh, we've put a piece of masking tape along where we're going to cut them 
because it has a veneer on it and we do not want to chip the veneer. That's a little tip if you're working with a veneer. Um, the other uh, thing is we've got the fence on the table saw set up to take off the exact amount that we need off. And we're going to use three people to do this. Um, it's kind of a heavy board here and so um, we'll want some extra hands to um, push it through and to retrieve it as it comes off of the blade. We had to cut down this section, the music stand section. The piano that we got parts from was a little bigger than our piano, so we had to cut off a little bit from each side for that. Also on the sides, um, our piano is a little bit not quite as deep, so we had to take off a couple of inches off of the depth of the side panels we were taking, and we had to do the same thing on the top. So everything's kind of taped together at the moment while we're figuring out how to cut down that front piece that's going to go across the front. Once we had figured out the dimensions for that front panel and how it was going to fit into this puzzle, basically, is what it is. We're putting a piano back together, and it's kind of like a big puzzle, big 3D puzzle. Um, we're going to secure now those side panels from our donor piano uh, to the our piano and we're going to first just apply a bunch of glue and then we're going to secure it with the wire brads. All right, we needed our front panel section of the piano to be about one inch smaller. The challenge was is we have two decorative ends on both sides and that center section where it has the sliding panels for where the rollers would have been for the player piano, that is a hinged piece that swings out to be the music holder. And so what we decided to do is remove that center section and then we've got basically the two sidebars and a crossbar across the top. And so what we're going to do is cut there at the top and take out one inch from that uh, cross section bar and then we will put it back together and then just trim down this part that hinges and it will be to the correct size for our piano. So the first thing we did is we cut that cross bar down to the finished dimension that we needed on the right side. And then we cut that remaining piece as close as we could get the blade to that decorative edge. And that is going to take out that one inch of uh, depth or width that we needed out of that cross bar. Now we need to reconnect that cross bar to that side decorative edge. And we're going to use my Craig jig to do this and what will, it will create some pocket holes on the back side of that cross bar piece where we can place screws and screw the two ends together. So I've made two pocket holes and you can see them right there. And then I'll put some glue on that joint and then we will hold the two pieces together. And this is where you need to have an extra set of hands to hold that together nice and tight. I did not have a clamp large enough to hold it. And then we will just use the screws and secure it together with the two screws. And it's going to make a joint that you won't even notice because it's right up against that decorative edge. Now, if you don't have a Craig um, jig to make those pocket holes. You could also use a biscuit joiner or you could put it together with dowels like we um, did when we attached the legs to the piano. We used a wood filler to fill in all of these seams that we made by attaching those side panels. We also had um, gouges in the wood that needed to be filled. 
Um, remember that our donor piano was really in rough condition as well as the one we had. So they had a lot of repair work that needed to be done. And I like to use the Bondo wood filler. It's a two-part epoxy mixing up uh, filler that really uh, bonds well to the wood. And once you sand it out smooth, it looks beautiful and you would never know that you've had to putty in those areas. And then our final um, thing is to just paint the piano. We used a charcoal chalk paint and it's a paint that I already had on hand. We wanted to do it a dark black or a dark gray color to begin with and we just painted it with two coats of chalk paint and then sealed it with a clear wax. And we will have another tutorial on how to paint a piano. Um, we figured that this one was long enough on how to put a piano back together, but we will go into the detail on how to paint a piano in another post. Doesn't this piano look amazing? We were able to take something that was broken, falling apart, had been abused over the years and really restore it. Now we couldn't give it a its original wood finish because we had two different species of wood. We had gouges and um, it was really a mess, but we were able to putty up those spots and fill it in and it looks great. The legs are now appropriate for the the age and style of the piano. They are secure. The piano is now safe. It's not going to tumble over on top of you. And it is a beautiful piece that will be cherished for years to come. In fact, maybe it's got another 140 years left in it still. Who knows? But it not only looks great, but it sounds great too because we did have the inside professionally repaired as well.